All right, so a lot of free to play or a lot of Gear 10 players uh, have been hitting me up, uh, trying to ask me how to make the jump to Gear 11 from Gear 10. And I'm not going to lie, it is a pretty daunting task at first. Um, you're always worried about, oh, what do I need? What if the meta changes? Um, how? What if I get trapped into a spending trap with... Uh, with, to keep up with the whales and those are all valid concerns but honestly uh with june coming up i think i've been in gear 11 land for about a year now and i gotta say it's really not that bad it's a totally different ball game from gear 9 or gear 10 but not as much as you think so um let's see here being a year at gear 11 I have, I don't know, 40-something Gear 11s. But that's not the point of this video. Let's say you are Gear 10, and you're thinking, oh, I want to do better in Siege. I want to do better uh, for my Alliance in Raids. I want to push myself to the next level. If those are what you are thinking about, I would say these are the prime these are the primary motivations to go gear 11 and i think you should go for it if you don't care to be competitive if you like to play this game more casually uh maybe gear 11 um i would still recommend it from like a gameplay standpoint just because the point of the game is to always advance your roster um but if you're not competitive you just like running whatever teams it's probably easier to stay at gear 9 gear 10 that being said, um, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to really get around this. So, let's uh, look at some gear 10s. And when I pull up his um, gears, you're going to notice there's a... Uh, and I've been doing this for a long time now. But you're going to notice there's a couple gears that you need to look out for. Uh, this gear right here, Quantum Field Energy. Um, this gear right here, Astro Force Energy. I think there's a level one that you need to look out for too i believe it's this one fifth dimensional energy let me just make sure uh yeah looks like it because those are going to be um always perpetually out of stock for uh energy characters if we look at reds same same gear slot uh you're gonna want to look for a lot of Inertron level 3, Nth Metal Piece level 2, and I believe uh, Inertron level 1, looks like it uh, for me. And then for Mystics, you look for Chaos Crystal Shard level 3, and Source Spark level 2, and I believe it should there should be another one that I'm always perpetually short on. It's gonna be where is it? This one right here. This one is a pain to get. Source Bark level one. Okay, so it's gonna be the same. Um, to be pretty consistent across all three affinities, that these are be short. Uh, I'm pretty sure the devs did this on purpose, just because now you gotta go back and hunt for level two and level one mats. So whatever. Um, I'm going to tell you my secret on how to acquire these. So you notice I do these three specific chapters, uh, or nodes, sorry, in chapter one, or bleh, seven. Um, that's because these have the highest drop rates for that specific gear. Now you're thinking, well, why would I want to be doing those nodes for my level two gears? Well... Well, the first benefit is you're getting experience mats and a green essence in return for, uh, I don't know, keep farming gear. Um, because farming gear costs uh, green essence, it costs gold. So this is a pretty good way to farm for your level 2 mats. And I'll just demonstrate it right now. Right there, 2 one one so i just gained four pieces 
Uh, when you make the jumps to tra from gear 10 to gear 11, uh, I think you're going to need like 250 of those. So if you do the math, that's just going to add up over time. Okay, so every day when I log in and I see my energy is full, I always do those nodes. Okay, um, it's a good way to add to your uh, PVE point totals um, for Alliance days. It's pretty decent on the return on energy. Um, it's pretty good road nodes to run. For chapter eight, these will farm. These will drop all the level three gears. And so, like I said earlier, quantum field energy is a pretty high drop rate for the Huntress. Um, Inertron's a pretty good drop rate for Hal Jordan. And then uh, right here, this piece right here, pretty good drop rate on the Batman node. So I always target farm these nodes. Um, if you always focus on those. Um, you're gonna get well <laughs> failed there. Didn't get a drop. Sometimes it's gonna happen, but uh, for the most part, these will drop you the highest uh, return on the gear pieces and getting a good way to get uh, experience mats and green essence. Okay, next part. Uh, now we're looking at one of the biggest bottlenecks in the game is experience mats and um. Green essence. Now, with the raids coming on the way, it's actually a really good way to get all that stuff back. Um, so, uh, there's two two types of color orbs you got to focus on. Uh, gray. Gray is going to cost you more green essence in the long run. So, try and use as little as you can. Um, let me see. It takes about 804, I believe. 803, 802, yep, 803 for level th 4 mats on the gray, um, and it costs you 6 million green essence right there. Uh, if you switch over to using blues, that's going to help reduce the cost. Uh, let's say you want to do, you can, I, I personally do a combination of the two. Um, so uh, level 66 up to the level 4 blue orbs, and then I'll do the rest with the level four gray orbs um see how my green essence cost got reduced by that much so um you know your inventory best you uh try and try and budget your uh experience mats the best you can obviously the best way to do to farm for experience mats is going to be uh, hopefully raids. Um, I didn't really beta test it this time, so hopefully raids will have better drops or the same drops that we saw, um, because that's a good way to farm for experience mats. Um, also, the uh, chapter eight and upgrade events; uh, those are the best ways to get experience mats. So, I it's pretty common knowledge, but uh, some people, for some reason, well. Some people will run chapter one, two, and three uh, for their heroic heroic days for the alliances. I say if you're gonna go commit to gear eleven, um, time to ditch those methods and go straight to um, straight to that. So now we got that out of the way. What we want to focus on is PvP and red alerts. Those are probably the biggest hindrance or biggest barriers i would say for uh players trying to jump into it um pvp what i did was i hit into the top 1500 and i figured out what was on my boards uh, to really account for while i was trying to pick out who was going to be who's going to make the uh cut so if you see on the leaderboards you're going to see a lot of how jordans a lot of Batgirls, Deadshot, um, Step. I never see Katana, so don't worry about that one. So you can kind of figure out what's going on with the meta that there. People rarely run Atrocitus these days. Um, right now is a really good time to jump into Gear 11. Uh, just because raids are on the way, you kind of want to do well for your alliance, but also 
the meta is really balanced right now. It's a really good spot. So trying to figure out from your roster how you would answer those. Back when I was uh, new to Gear 11, Clayface was a thing. Uh, Red Robin and Robin were a thing. So, And Starfire didn't exist yet. So my go-to was uh, Jessica Cruz, Etrigan, and Harley. Um, someone dies, Jessica powers up, kills those reds. Um, Etrigan powers up, kind of, you know, you just go from there. Um, you're going to see a lot of standard teams like that. Um, really, they're not that hard. If you beat them in, like, gear 10 land, gear 11 land, or not, sorry, gear 9 land, they are really the same way, really. I will say, though, that they some characters kind of change how they operate um, once they hit the higher levels. So, for example, Harley... Let's see here, Harley. At gear 10, most people keep them at level 60. Sorry, that was Poison Ivy. God dang it. Harley, there we go. This isn't maxed yet for the gear 10 people, and they're not have they don't have the uh evasion up plus 1. And that really does make a difference on how how uh often she's going to dodge people. I would say um, watch out for that. If you don't have Steppenwolf or can't miss character, um, you better be prepared for her to retaliate. Um, let me see here. Another character I would be concerned about is Power Girl. Now, her passive is 40% chance to use Power Punch on Attacker if she has 4 Strength Ups. Um, Solar Charge. Now, at gear 10... I doubt a lot of people are going to have this maxed out. They're going to have plus one, two. So she has like plus three strength ups. Um, at gear 11, once she powers up, boom. She already hits that gate. And then she can retaliate against you. And it's over for your team. So you better be prepared for her to start wrecking your team. That's why she's so popular in the higher levels. Um, another thing with, um, with the meta too is just, you know, you just got to know how to handle your, commit to your picks and just know how to handle the uh, opponents that you are given. Um, let me think here. This goes into another tangent about PvP, but you can see here that I have a lot of plus three plus 6, plus 8 to 14 fights. Occasionally, I'll get the plus 20 fights. Uh, that is based off of the top 4 characters on your roster. So for me, Jessica Cruz, Red Robin, Constantine, and Zod. Uh, that totals out to be about 30,000.5, 30.5k. And so the game, for some reason, registers that teams that are 2k higher than you will register as like a plus 14 2k lower plus 6 I believe or plus 3 um, if you really care about um, performing high see for me it was relatively easy for me to jump into the top 100 this week uh, just because I get a lot of 14s nowadays because of rebirth um, if you're new to gear 11 you can kind of exploit this and uh, exploit those tricks and uh, go gear 10.5. Now, 10.5 is kind of a misnomer because um, technically I have an almost maxed out Black Adam. I have an almost maxed out Black Lightning. Um, their power levels are insanely high. And so if I were to take those gear pieces, they would jump to the front of my roster and they would change my uh, PvP matchmaking. So that's just kind of math that you kind of figure out on your own. Um, if you have questions about that, feel free to hit me up. That's just going to make my video way too long. Uh, the last thing I want to touch on is probably red alerts. Um, so this is what I'm finding in my red alerts. 
I'm sure that the stronger your roster gets, the harder your opponents are going to be. But I think for the most part, if you pick like a safe picks like Etrigan or Hal Jordan and you focus on shield or overheal strategies, you're going to do just fine in red alerts. It's all about sustain and getting through. Um, there's really not much to it. it. Red alerts does not change. You're not going to face some heavy duty opponent that's going to wreck you and you have the option of picking your battles. So as long as you have, like I said, if you have an answer for teams in PvP, you'll have an answer for all these teams in red alerts. I've never failed a day in red alerts. Um, so you really shouldn't have any problems. I only had, like I said, I only had Atrigan, Harley Quinn, Jessica Cruz in my first three gear 11s. And I completed red alerts just fine. My strategy was shield and overheal. Uh, the meta is different now, so you're going to have to... What the heck? A rebirth Hippolyta? <laughs> anyway, um, you're just going to have to adjust for whatever the meta is for your red alerts and kind of go from there um and one more thing going back to the uh gear you don't have to max out every don't don't fall into the trap thinking that you have to max out every gear piece i personally try if i'm using black adam personally i'm trying to end my matches quick so it's not going to matter if black adam holds up or not for me i just kind of blow people away and move on this is a health gear piece or a Agility, stamina, it'll add about, I don't know, two, three hundred points to his power. Yeah, two hundred points. He's going to jump to the front of my roster. I don't want that. So I chose to leave it off. Um, that's not a big deal for me. He survives just fine. Another thing, too, is rings. Um, when you're budgeting for rings, <laughs> because hope rings and life and death rings are super hard to come by focus on which skills you can see yourself maxing out and go from there everything else is kind of luxury now what i mean is i'd say lex war suit all you really need is maybe these two skills and that's it this one four strength downs is nice but two strength downs get the job done anyway so if you don't use this move often you're probably never going to need it so don't really bother maxing enough. You're not going to use it. Um, nuclear option. You're rarely going to use it in a lot of matches. So maybe you don't need to bring that. Um, let's do another example. Supergirl. I have no rings in her. Except for this one. Because I only use her for her passive ability. Everything else, she does like no damage. So why do I need to max out her abilities? Uh, so you can save yourself some rings just doing that. So I have like 400 green rings now, 200 hope rings now. So save yourself some time, save yourself some money. Um, so like I said, you don't need to max every character out. You don't need to go level 80. Just focus on going 70. Pick out the individual gear pieces that you think you might need for me. Jessica Cruz, I like to make her tanky and, you know, hit it harder. So I took all her gears. But also that came with the price of a high power level. So if you uh, want to score high in Wraith PvP, keep your power level low. My my skill, my skill uh, power level ceiling is going to be 7.6k. So if a new character comes out that's more than 7.6k, I don't max them right away. I kind of wait and see how I want to use them. Probably the biggest exam recent example is gonna be Alan Scott. If I took went full gear eleven with him, he'd probably be about seven point eight K power level. If I did my math right, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Um so he's got a power power level. Um I didn't take all his gears. He does just fine doing gear ten point five or ten point eight. <laughs> uh this skill here. He doesn't kill people, barely sometimes um he just needs to crit to land the kill otherwise i don't really need that skill maxed out his passives very useful i maxed it out so and that's what i did with that um yeah so 
just really sit down, figure out who you're going to use the most, who's going to give you the most bang for your buck, and have a core roster. Uh, ideally, you want someone who's a heavy hitter, a utility character, a taunt, and a purger. Um, and that's going to carry you a long way. And uh, every month after that, you'll figure out which tunes will enhance your roster, and you just keep going from there. So it's really, really not that bad once you get the hang of it. Uh, if any questions, feel free to hit me up.